Hello! If you've never been on my channel before, I'm Amazon Kane, I'm a writer, I obsess over Angela Anaconda, I do rewatch videos, that's what this is, and my ultimate goal is to run an official reboot of the series, and you can see what that would look like on my channel as I organized a small team to revamp the theme song. This week's episode is She's Under Pressure. It is lunchtime, and everyone that is one of my friends are thinking we are bored of eating the same old boring lunches we bring from home every day. Karaz is for sharing this taco with us, Nanette. That's Roger, a big taco. I don't usually eat food that isn't French, but since it was Alfredo's birthday, I thought I'd be a generous patroness and let him make us lunch. <laughs> Do you think she paid him extra to wear the little mustache and hat to school? Town, but I eat it every day. Think I should tell Nona I want something new? Not if you don't want her to give you the evil eye, Johnny Abadi. But don't worry, on account of I have a plan that will solve all of our problems. We will just trade with each other. Funny you should say that, Angela. I was just eyeing Gordy's supermarket purchase cellophane wrapped tuna sandwich and thinking the same thing. I can't trade with you because your salami sub with gherkins and spicy mustard would give me a sinus attack. I know that Jimmy covets my heavenly angel food cake, but he shall not have it, for he bears a double dip cheese on a stick and I am intolerant to lactose. Oh, oh she is? Gee, I'm stuck with pizza again. Not necessarily really? Johnny Abadi. I feel like Johnny can work with this. I think it's a cinch to fix. Gina will take Gordy's lunch, but Gordy will take Johnny's. Jimmy wants Josephine's, which is okay, because Josephine will take Gina's. I'll take Jimmy's and Johnny, I'll have mine. Everybody got it? No. Then close your eyes, Johnny. Okay. One, two, three, trade! Wow! Looks like everyone got it but Johnny. Hey, my pizza turned into a sandwich. Angela Anaconda, your food relocation skills are exceptional. Angela oh, got the cheese stick. What is that stench coming from your lunch? Say toi de gaste, which is French for you're not really going to eat that, are you? Jesus, Nanette, let the man eat. Thanks a lot, Angela. <laughs> Johnny! Okay, so maybe I didn't bring something good to trade this time. But you can bet that tomorrow I'm That's going to bring something fine. good. Really good. Really? <laughs> the important thing is Eat the baby! that everyone likes. Lima beans. Ugh. Russell sprouts in a can. Double blech. Strange Eat the baby! <laughs> huh? No, baby Lulu. You may like strained peas, but big kids do not. Lulu, no! Don't! I'm gonna... Staple, but but it's PB and J. I like peanut oh, butter. I never got peanut, peanut butter and jelly yes. together. True, but there's nothing special about it. This is a supply and demand business, Angela Anaconda, and there's plenty of peanut butter. So we demand you bring something different. <sighs> I still say Johnny could have the monopoly on this because of the pizza. Jimmy, I'll see your chicken pot pie, and I'll raise you a container of jiggly fruit. And I see your jiggly fruit. And you can see my slice of pineapple and prosciutto pizza. But I will trump you all. Crustless PB&J. With no crust. Um, Angela, there's just one problem. Crustless bread is nothing new either. Yeah. Dang, tough crowd. But I thought it... Oh, Angela, pass me the fancy ketchup soup plate. I need to eat my French cut French fries, cut especially by my French chef, before they get cold. So now I am... Ketchup! Need is something kids like. That is different, but different in a way they've never seen before. Hmm. <laughs> Eat the baby! <laughs> also, I really love how sadistic this is. Unintentionally. Soylent Green! Out with my favorite spaceship cookie cutter myself. <gasps> Angela, is that the same peanut butter and jelly sandwich you've been bringing for the past two days? Because <laughs> if it is, I think that that's. <laughs> That's hilarious. It, it's not mold, Gordy Reinhardt. It's, uh, it's an alien. Yeah, a mutant that's, uh, clinging to the outside of the spaceship. Such a shame your trading system can't work out Angela Yikes. Anaconda. Perhaps you should have imported these custom design crates, which I might be willing to trade for the right price. <gasps> I've got uh, it's hard to succeed in this Angela market. Research. Uh, hmm. It has to be something so amazingly fantastic that everyone, even would want to trade for it. How about frozen dotty cakes? Everybody loves dotty cakes. True, but you are the only one who eats them frozen, Gina Lash. <laughs> if what you're looking for is the ultimate lunchtime experience, Angela, then how about macrobiotic rice cakes? It's an experience I look forward to every morning. Oh. Sorry, Gordy Reinhardt, but I was hoping for something with flavor. Hey, where are the breaks on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Hmm. Cheese food in a can? The packaging 
is certainly enticing and makes me want to throw caution to the wind and ignore all my food restrictions. Dang, Gordy. Yeah. And it is oh, I thought she snorted that for a second. <laughs> Grilled cheese. She's on those 
<laughs> I question the logic. So another one, the pacing in this definitely is better than some of the other ones, and I really like the idea that it's all about trading food. I think it could have been punched up even more. I like the idea that Angela keeps bringing boring food and needs to have something a little more exciting, more interesting. It's a really interesting way to show the battle for attention. I love how that's done. I do question the logic behind her giving the spray cheese to Nanette only to instantly regret it. Honestly, Angela got the way better deal out of that. I feel like Nanette would have very good food. Actually, I just revisited it, and why I was confused is because Angela has a few lines where she said she got caught up in the moment, but in actuality, she doesn't agree to the trade, and Nanette just pretty much takes it from her. But I guess it's not about food, it's about attention. That's one, that's the first time the logic didn't feel natural to me. She would just give it away. I didn't, I wasn't even buying, it didn't feel like she was caught up in the moment either. It just felt like it came out of nowhere. Also, that is not enough lunch. The, the adult in me is questioning how much these kids are really getting to eat, especially because there's a lot of pastries that they're just eating for meals. Not healthy. <laughs> It's still a good idea. The revenge fantasy could have been more violent. The episode about food definitely needed some more cannibalism jokes. I feel like it could have been punched up because you could have seen how crazy the trades got and I feel like that could have been, you could have had this underground snack ring played at like bribery, extortion, poker, gambling, the mafia, kind of like what Community did with the chicken nugget episode. They could have gotten one step further with the craziness, but it did have a fun environment. It was cool to see the characters interacting off each other. It was cool to see, oh, you got to see Angela and her four friends trading food, but you also got to see with the other classmates, Jimmy Jamal, Josephine Praline, Nanette. You got to see the battle for attention with food and how petty it can really be. And how attention really can just come and go. This was a really creative way to show that. This was a very creative episode. I had a lot of fun with this environment. I had a lot of fun with this setup because it is relatable, trading food. And of course, Mrs. Brinks is just scrubs anyone else. <laughs> yeah. Bribery clearly works. This also did a really good job making you more frustrated with Nanette. That being said, you're still frustrated with Nanette in a way that doesn't take away from the fun and the creativity of the story. It's extremely relatable because who hasn't gotten ripped off in a trade and who hasn't gotten something stolen from them as a kid, even if it's really, really small. So that's very relatable, not to mention knowing people like Net, who not only will steal from you when they're jealous, but will straight up one-up you and they're just a pain in the ass to deal with. This did a really, really good job making you increasingly frustrated. It kept the focus where it should be. And it does have a lot of fun with the environment. You do get appropriately frustrated with Nanette, so the revenge fantasy is very well deserved here. It is well earned. It could have been more violent. <laughs> but that's also just the sadist in me. This was a really fun one, and I thoroughly appreciated it. It was very nostalgic, it was very creative, it was very fun. I like seeing the characters work off each other. I love seeing Nanette be very, very frustrating. Mrs. Brinks was very funny in this. I liked seeing that battle for attention. It definitely reminded me, <laughs> not quite to this extent, but trading meals in school, I definitely remember. I feel like that's also always gonna be a thing. Fun, cute episode. I also can't think of a ton of shows, especially 11 minute shows where the whole thing is about trading food and this, this environment. So it is pretty unique. This one felt like this is its own thing. It has fun with the weirdness. I love that very sadistic cut of Angela Matt as a mad scientist making that sandwich. I also love the reveal that she's just bringing in the same sandwich two or three days in a row. That's very funny. That was a good joke. Overall, a fun, creative, nostalgic, 
sadistic, weird, funny, creative, a little bit sadistic, fun episode.